Okay, here we go. Uh, mutations, and we're going to worry about chromosomal mutations. So, we have karyotypes. So, what is a karyotype? It is the picture of chromosomes. I guess the phenotype of the chromosomes themselves, the physical appearance of the chromosomes, um, and they are the homolo homologous pairs, from biggest to smallest, and the X and Y chromosomes at the end, and it's used to detect genetic problems in fetuses. So here is a picture of a normal human karyotype. Uh, on the left you have the six chromosomes X and Y which is a male and on the right you have XX which is female and you're all obviously familiar with that so that's fine. So this is the normal karyotype of a of a healthy human I guess. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is aneuploidy which is abnormal number of chromosomes uh, most common in, with chromosome 21, 18 and 13 one homologous pair fails to separate during meiosis uh, one gamete is missing that chromosome and one gamete has an extra copy of that chromosome uh, a missing chromosome is lethal an extra chromosome may or may not be lethal um, and the example is Down syndrome so some Down syndrome can can be lethal um, but obviously uh, not in, not in every instance so again in your ploidy, a homologous pair of chromosomes may fail to separate during meiosis one one gamete receives uh, both chromosomes and may survive and the missing gamete chromosome the gamete missing the chromosome sorry cannot so on the left here we have um, a purplish chromosome we have a turquoise-ish greenish chromosome we have another purple chromosome and on the right we have just the green chromosome so that's missing a purple chromosome the one on the right and the one on the left has an additional purple chromosome um, which is an example of uh, aneuploidy. So here we start off with a normal cell which has the correct number of chromosomes uh, so they rep replicate as they do in meiosis uh, they line up along the equator they start to split however they don't split properly so the top half of the cell gets both purple chromosomes um, and a set of green and the bottom half just gets a set of green um, they split as you can see here again that bottom cell only has the green uh, the top cell has two purples in the green and then that bottom cell does the, the sister chromatid split and then you've got aneuploidy gametes which only have one which are missing a copy of a chromosome and that's lethal so those gametes aren't viable then the top two gametes again they have an extra copy of the purple chromatid and having an additional copy of the chromosome isn't always lethal so they may survive so that's uh, aneuploidy there it's an example of aneuploidy. So as I mentioned the most famous example I guess you could say of aneuploidy is our friend right here sorry bear with me is uh, Down syndrome so the homologous pair of chromosome 21 fails to separate during meiosis one gamete has no chromosome 21 and so that one's not viable and dies the other gamete receives an extra chromosome 21 
uh, when that chromosome, when that gamete, sorry, fuses with the gamete of the other parent, um, the resulting zygote has three copies of chromosome 21, and the symptoms of this is known as Down syndrome. So that is the most famous, I guess, uh, example of, of aneuploidy. Uh, another example of aneuploidy, um, uh, Killeen Felters syndrome, sorry, don't know how to say that. Um, but what you've got right above me here is uh, uh, an additional copy of the X6 chromosome. So again, the gamete, the six chromosomes didn't separate properly, and one gamete had no copy of a six chromosome, the other gamete had two copies. Um, that fused with the, the gamete from the other parent, um, which resulted in three six chromosomes. Uh, so XXY, uh, this is, I guess, commonly known as like a feminine looking man. So, um, small testicular size, long legs, uh, wide hips, which is characteristic of a female. You get breast development, um, tendency to grow fewer, uh, chest hairs, narrow shoulders. All of this is, um, I guess, uh, common in XXY individuals. Then you have XO individuals. Uh, so they're they're missing a sex chromosome and this is called Turner syndrome and I'm not too familiar with the symptoms from Turner syndrome. Uh, then you have XXX individuals, so they have the trisomy for the X, and you have XYY syndrome, which is um they have X and two Ys. And these individuals are normal, uh, one commonly don't survive, but two if they do are really aggressive and really violent and most of them, a lot of them end up in jail apparently, so yeah, so those are another examples of aneuploidy, so uh, one gamete gets an additional copy, another doesn't have a copy, that gamete is not viable um, and so the examples we've gone over are Down syndrome, uh, the XXY syndrome, XO Turner syndrome, then you have the trisomy X and you have the XYY. Right. Uh, then I'll just try and fly through the rest of this. So one set of chromosomes, so there are no pairs, uh, the gametes, and this is called haploid. Uh, this is the n number of chromosomes, animals, uh, haploidy are rare, common in some species, e.g. Um, honeybees, um, plants, alternation of generations in some primitive species, such as mosses, haploid uh, generations are dominant. Uh, so this is an organism itself with a haploid number of chromosomes, so n number of chromosomes. Well, humans, we have two n, so we have 23 pairs of 46 chromosomes. Some um, animals and plants do just have n number of chromosomes or haploid number of chromosomes, which is quite cool. Oh, sorry, I took the wrong one. Diploid is two sets of chromosomes. That's common in humans, most plants and most animals. Uh, chromosomes are in homologous pairs. One of each chromosome from the parent, a normal state for most plants and animals. Now you've got polyploidy, which you should have gone over in writing your essays. And this is like aneuploidy, but multiplied across the entire um, karyotype, I guess. So multiple complete chromosome sets. So animals, this is usually lethal, except for some reptiles, fish, and invertebrates. Um, and most plants. It's an important mechanism for speciation. So. 
Um, you've got auto polyploid, so one gamete contains complete diploid set of chromosomes. Um, so you've got complete non-disjunction, so disjunction is when um, the chromosomes don't separate properly. Uh, so one gamete has 2N, the other gamete has N, the resulting um, individual is 3N, so has 3 sets of chromosomes. Uh, or you have both sets of chromosomes which contain a complete diploid set of, um, sorry, both sets of gametes which contain a complete diploid set of chromosomes. Uh, 2N, 2N equals 4N, obviously. Oh, again, wrong slide, sorry. So there are two different but related uh, species interbreed. Uh, infertile, hy infertile hybrid because no homologous pairs, but they can grow vegetatively, uh, which means, say, if you cut, say, the leaf, which is uh, the leaf off a plant and put it in a particular, particular nutrient environment, it, it can grow an entirely new plant, so they can grow asexually. Um, so subsequent non-disjunction non is polyploidy, and then they are fertile because they are now matching uh, pairs of chromosomes. If you want to ask me about this, um, this allo polyploidy uh, in class, go right ahead. So the change in the so chromosome numbers uh, due to non-disjunction of chromosomes in meiosis. Uh, you have aneuploidy, which is in correct number of one or several chromosomes and you have polyploidy which is three or more complete sets of uh, chromosomes and that will do us for now